This is UGRC one critical thinking and practical reasoning. My name is Dr. Nancy Miles Balfour JP. And I'm doing this together with my TA, Lady Lucy. We are going to help you through the unit that discusses causal reasoning, one of your exam units that you should take particular note of. I'm, I'm addressing January 2024 cohort for main campus, but I think the content sets all our groups very well. So you can reference them in addition to the substantive content at your course site. I have Ejaya's hand, Abdallah, Joshua, Isaac Ando, Joel, Kriamoa, and Jacobet Aqua. So we want Ejaya to start for us, help us understand uh, causal reasoning. Ejaya, please read what you see on your screen. Okay, thank you, madam. Hmm. Causal reasoning, cause and effect based. It is common place to seek the cause or causes of things. COVID-19, climate change, flooding, destroyed relationship, decline in spirituality, sore friendship, etc. Again, causal, not casual, arguments are also inductive, a matter of probability, not proof or certainty. Well done. You read it very well. So I gave you an introduction to reasoning causally. And our discussion unit now is going to look at why it is that we can call it, how we reason around cause and effect, and how it is that we can call out an anomaly, a problem that we find with how someone is grounding their claims causally. They are trying to show what, what accounted for something. There's an effect, or we are trying to establish what accounted for that effect. But then we may detect something that is not appropriate about how that justification was offered. So that causal uh, reasoning, grounding the justification, we, we, we feel that oh, there is something not proper about how you grounded your cause and effect reason. See, when we are doing that, we are diagnosing the possible causes of things, what brought about the effect. And if you say it was X or Y, the critical thinker's work begins by looking at how how it was this cause that led to this effect, or these multiplicity of causes combined that led to this effect. That work, that attitude of questioning and interrogating and examining the cause and effect reasoning is what we are going to do in this course. Okay, so it's not that we are going to find what caused something. That's not our work. We are not social scientists investigating what, what may be the cause of Ghana's inflation or why is it that MPP never gets a certain percentage of vote from Kitu South and NDC doesn't get a certain number of vote from Bantama. That's political scientists' work. Or why is it that a certain couple are not you know, con having conception as maybe the gynecologist or, or the, but you see, finding out what caused something is not what we are doing here, but we are diagnosing the logic behind the reasoning for what causes. So when someone says it is this person that is causing so and so, then our work begins. We want to see on what grounds do you see this one causes? Okay, so. We, we quickly tell you, therefore, that causal reasoning is not a deductive approach to reasoning. It is an inductive one, meaning it is a probability matter. It is never a certainty. We never establish a certainty where we reason causally. That is just so that you put it in your mind that don't expect that you have established what really caused it, because we are not able to establish that. With certainty. Please read this also. Okay. Different connotations, meanings of the word cause. Cause at proximate condition, nearest to the effect. Agent, person or entity with intention. Necessary condition, must be present for the effect to occur. Sufficient condition, if present, then effect. 
but other conditions can yield that effect. Individually necessary, jointly sufficient condition. If alone necessary, but together with other conditions, they become sufficient for the occurrence of the effect. Example, sunlight, water, etc., for photosynthesis to take place. Probabilistic, that's likelihood. Note, so, so far as we are dealing with empirical evidence, no effect can lay claim to only one single cause. Well done, well done. You read very well. I pray that you get 30 over 30 there again. Yeah. Not the account 20. Amen. Exam, you get 52 over 50. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, so, uh, amen. Now, your friend just read something to us. Immediately, you see the word connotation. You need to. Then you see necessity and sufficiency. This is part of what we, what we, we did in modus ponens and tooling, and where antecedent and consequent. The antecedent is sufficient for what? the consequent. Well, the consequent is necessary to the antecedent. And, and that language is technical, so we didn't worry with it. The philosophers worry, worry themselves with that. Okay. The antecedent presence is sufficient. It is enough to guarantee that the consequent will come. If the mother enters the room, the pregnant woman, then it is enough grounds for us to know that the baby has come through. If you enter the room yourself, you, then we have sufficient reason to believe that your shadow is also in the room. Why? Because of the containment. The consequent is already inside the antecedent. We've seen that already. So I'm just showing you that we are in unit nine, but the things we are working with are from the previous unit. If you don't engage the previous unit very well, when you build on it, just like anything in that, if the foundation is no good, what can you build on it? I just quoted scripture to you, okay? The same way the builder has to make sure the foundations are right. So as soon as you're struggling to build on something, let your revision be on the earlier one. Find out what did I leave out? What didn't I do right? Can I fill in those gaps? So that when you build on it, it will stand right. Now back to what we did. So the word connotations means meanings. You need two. Where we saw a convocation. See that is here. What different meanings can we give to the word cause? So when people said he caused it or she caused it, or colonialism is the cause of Africa's poverty. See what I've just done or man's uh, depravity, the way man is so depraved, is caused by the devil. Or at the law court, the rapist says, it's not my fault. I got a bad growing time. So it is not me. It is where I grew up. Naim Kosa. These are all claims of causality. See the earlier one, which I read. What is causing the constant sore friendships? You, none of your friendships last. What could be the cause of it? See, what could be the reason for sore friendship? What could, what, what could be the cause of COVID-19? Was it a biological or an attack technology generated? virus to attack a specific nation, then we ourselves got ourselves messed up. Could it could it be God's punishment? <laughs> could it have been our own way of disrespecting nature, not loving the world that God created? So much so that nature is resisting and giving us all these strange ailments. Could it? What is the cause? So cause and effect, what we are reasoning causes from social to psycho to politics to economics to philosophy to religion. What is the cause of man's depravity? Um, if we are in church, it's a sin, singular sin, not sin. They're not plural, it's one. And so we can, if you keep looking at how causes are diagnosed. Now we quickly showed you that when we are reflecting on causal reasoning like this. We are engaged in an inductive reasoning, just like analogy, sampling, and relative induction. This is also one. And then your friend now tells us the various connotations of the word cause. Please, we can hear you. 
Oh, say I can't hear you. Okay, say I can't hear you. Others can. I think others can hear me. Can anyone hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, okay. yes, 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 Proximity, approximately, you see that? Approximate, near proximity. So, proximate condition. You may be talking about what immediately happened before the effect. That could be one of the things you have in mind when you say cause. Now, who caused some? Who did it? Who brought about the effect? You may just be thinking about what immediately occurred before the effect. So someone poured water at the entrance there. And when you were coming to my office, God forbid, then you slipped and fell down. If we ask what caused it, someone might say it's the water. So meaning that that was the most immediate uh, antecedent condition from which the effect came. But it might be that the person who poured the water poured it because he or she was in a hurry to come and help grandma who was falling down on the staircase. Okay? And grandma to left her room because the person who is supposed to put her breakfast there left it in the kitchen. Let's say mommy. Mommy left it in the kitchen. So grandma has to leave her bed and she's sick by herself to go and get the breakfast. So on her way going, the attendant who was wiping the floor stopped the wiping. She put the water to wipe, but she was, she had to save grandma before she falls off the staircase. So who or what caused the visitors falling down? The visitor fell down in front of my office because there was water poured. The immediate, the proximate would be the water that had to pour. She, but perhaps let's go to the next one. But perhaps he asked which agent caused us the being, the entity that brought about the effect. Someone may blame mommy or grandma. Because if grandma was in her room, or maybe even the, the excuse my language, the, the cleaner. That is, so agent, as course, is talking about a person who has intention. Agent, I can, agent. You see, they always say, uh, uh, agent, uh, in, in local parlance, we talk of this person is an agent. I said, yeah, he or she's been used to do something in your life. Agent. Okay. So if the secretary were to give you away to the boss, that this guy comes to work too late. And then the meeting, after the meeting with the boss, you are sacked. We can say that the cause of your sack is the secretary. As an agent, this sense of the word cause is not just proximity, but what agenta. It could be the University of Ghana awarded the degree to this person. Who awarded the degree? What caused the award of the degree? Agent can still be the corporate entity, the person called the University of Ghana. That is the, the legal sense of the word person. Okay, So Ghana can win World Cup. Ghana as a person. And yet when I'm looking for Ghana, I can see. So it's not, agent is not necessarily a human being. Agent is either a human person or an entity that is presupposed to have what? Intention and action. Now think of cause also as what? Necessity. Necessary condition that must be for the effect to occur. And I like to use the football scenario. I think it always helps me communicate that to students. For you to score a goal in football, football, hmm? I'm not talking American football, I'm talking the one that we know in Ghana. <laughs> okay, the one that uh, 24, uh, 22 strong men ran after one leather with a, ball, a balloon with ball inside, uh, air inside, okay, football, that one. The necessary condition for scoring is the ball entering the net. Your dribbling is not our concern. Your skills are dribbling. That wish, you know, all these 
it, it, it doesn't matter when we are talking scoring. So for we, a team, or for us a team to say that we have scored a goal, for us to celebrate, uh, there is something that must necessarily happen. So sometimes when I say what caused it, I am looking not only for proximity or agent, but I'm also, I may also be asking about what the necessary condition that necessarily brought about the effect. See that without that thing, the effect would never have happened. Have happened. We would never have said go if the full circumference of the ball didn't enter the net. If you like you, the player, turn the ball into your, your own net. Hey, let's see. And go and score it. The other people will start jumping. Yeah. That's called ongo. The ball, the ball must cross. Dribble. Carry the cap. Tell us your argument. All the things you've had. It doesn't win. It doesn't score a goal. So it's not necessary. Most of the time, <laughs> most of the time, people come to school now. And all their focus is on non-essential things. Things that are not necessary to their being here. Yes, by all means, pay a little, have fun, attend social events, go to church or the mosque, whichever religious faith you have. I mean, by all means, do all those, but never do it at the expense of what is necessary to your being here. Shit up, Gary, eh? Chobos, trunk to SHS. Entertainment time and all those are fine. They all add to your being there, but they are not essential. What must B for the effect to occur is a necessary condition such that without that thing, the effect won't come. So when I talk causal reasoning, the cause may be proximate condition before the effect one, or it may be the agent agency behind the effect, or C, what necessitated the effect without which the effect couldn't have come. Very good. Now, sufficient condition is not the same as necessary condition. These two words are technical. So listen to me attentively. I just showed you necessity. As for necessary condition, the effect will never come that unless the, that, that condition is there because it's necessary to the effect as we have studied with the spirit. See that. But look at sufficiency. Sufficiency, like I read, is that condition that if it is present, then it will give us the effect. But some other condition can also give us the, the effect. So it is not necessary to the effect. You see that it's only sufficient. Its presence is enough grounds to give us the effect. But some other condition could also give that same effect at a time. Maybe if you eat plenty of salt, it is sufficient you see, to giving the effect of an, a heart attack or blood pressure, something like that. But other things can generate blood pressure. Like if I called you and gave you bad news at once like that, you can get a quick, whatever, con con congestion in your heart and immediately develop BP. If you entered my room and you saw flies there, Mango, eating mango and leaving droplet of the mango juice on my table, unclean, unattended to, is sufficient for what? Generating flies in my room. But it is not necessary. So when you come into my room and you see flies, it doesn't necessarily mean, necessarily see that, mean that I've eaten mango. Because it could be something else that is too early to talk about. <laughs> okay? It could be something else. Or another one. It could be like I, I, I just finished cutting fresh fish and left the, the entrails and the blood uh, on, the, on the kitchen cabinet. You get to clean it. That can also be a sufficient reason for flies being in the room. It could be that when I was coming from outside, my shoes stepped into some unpleasant places. Want to be cautious, but I'm <laughs> okay. 
And I brought it into the room. So at the bedside there, no way, my dear. So they had to send death and, you know, I'm a sent now, but then what am I? It could be that. So you cannot necessarily presume that you saw flies. Therefore, it means someone has put something in the chamber pot in the room there. Not necessarily. But it is sufficient. So sufficiency is not necessary. And yet they all describe a certain connotation of the word cause. I'm sure you got that one. Then we have the joint one, where they are jointly sufficient. When you put all the conditions together, it becomes enough grounds for the effect to happen. Yet individually, those antecedent conditions are necessary. Human beings survive on, we are told, scientifically, they, they survive on oxygen, water, sunlight, maybe energy or food or something. Okay. Each one of them is necessary. You can't have a human being living only eating and not breathing. How will you eat the food? You know, go back. Go It's very hot. Even to take it in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You have to be busy. So. <laughs> so eating good food there is fine. But you need oxygen. You, you have to have oxygen. <laughs> and you need sunlight. And you need a social relation. Human beings are not machines. You have to relate. Eh? Take that cue from me. Whether it is a church or mosque. When I say church, I mean religion. Eh? Because so church or corporate setting, always remember dealing with human beings. People want to enter into some place and they want to do like their mechanics, artificial intelligence. Oh, oh you're joking. So sometimes you can get people to work with you, sign that your corporate setting. They will be reacting for what they're entitled because they relate with you in a way that they don't think it is work, everything business, 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 10%. No, 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 they're just delivering. They are happy that the thing is going on because the time being spent with you as a boss or as a compatriot is so pleasant. You buy some granite and banana, they are eating, they are packing the stuff, and what have you. Corporateness doesn't necessarily mean inhumaneness. Tinker. So that thing is a need as well. If you do that, the human being becomes properly human, not mechanically human. So water, light, oxygen, what I believe, individually, see what I believe, are necessary. Yet, when they all come together, they become sufficient. So you have to know that sometimes when we talk cause, what caused the effect, it includes proximity. You may be thinking of the proximity and all the others I've mentioned. So the last one, probabilistic cause. Then I'll add the next person to it. Probabilistic cause. Sometimes when I say, what caused it? I am not looking for what we even empirically think necessitated the effect. We are just trying to think around the probability around it. Like you are at the Trotron station, you see some sister and brother, or better still, the mate and a passenger. Agba shet. No shet are off. Oh, boy, try dread. People are hitting themselves. Fine, brother. Who did you get? He has put the shit there. You will be shy. So what? If you like come, and the mate who is standing there with his armpit issues and all that, not all mates have armpit, armpit issues. I just want to create a scenario. Also throwing, uh, so when you are observing, you can ask your hey, what is happening there? Then maybe the Momo brother will do it. He say, hey, what you picking? He say, he say, he say, he say, say, not go and see. Maybe it's change matter. Change coins be the mate wants to cheat. You know what I am trying to find out. Is what could probably be causing that effect we see there. The one asking and the one responding, obviously, are not looking for what actually is causing that what is happening there. We are just trying to think around it. So if you greeted the landlady, morning, your mommy, and she made a fasting from so you know, good morning, your mommy, yeah, yeah, get away from there. You know, if I'm observing, I may be trying to diagnose what could possibly be causing this kind of outburst from the woman. Is it rent issue? Maybe the guy hasn't paid his rent. Or maybe he's chasing the, 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 the grandmother's granddaughter or something. All these are probabilities. Obviously, not looking for necessity or uh, agent or whatever. Okay. So 
sometimes when we talk course, that's what we have in mind. And at the critical mind, we want to know all these multiple meanings that we could give to the word course in order not to think that whenever someone said, he caused all the situation I've gone through, you should think that therefore he as an individual agent really did it. Sometimes he's just the person that was proximate to the event. He made the phone call to tell that, oh, we have lost our deputy finance minister. And just when someone had it, her baby, that is in her tummy, uh, she, she miscarried. It doesn't mean that that person that caught me the phone call came to take a knife and cut her tummy. But we may be thinking of that person as a cause. Sometimes we are causal agents that God forbid that for us and God should help us all. That's about helping people. Right? Even sometimes just what you, we are saying or our demeanor towards people. So, so cause may not be that you, you were the witch that flew at night to come and bring that effect. But it could mean any of these. You see how much time I took and the patience with which I explained this, because you have to understand that to know what we are going to do next. So when we diagnose the possible causes of pain, we already have all these possibilities in our mind. Now there are fallacies associated with thinking in certain ways of the word cause. We'll see it shortly. We'll see post hoc ego propter hoc. We'll see the method. I think we should. We do that now. Or maybe let's finish that and then come back to that. Okay, you will see that if I think of course as proximity, then I may make a mistake. As soon as grandma said good morning to me, I, uh, my results for critical thinking was released. I got a notice from the critical thinking lecture who said, go for video, that I've gotten killed in the course. So unpleasant it did. It is grandma's fault. <laughs> because she just greeted me good morning. I got the notification. When I checked the mail, I have gotten a, a, I didn't win the lot. She calls up. You see what is happening? Because you are thinking of course in terms of what, what immediately happened before the effect. So it can create a fallacy. Let me just tell you that. And I think it's a good time. So you're understanding it easier. When you think of course in terms of proximity, you can create this fallacy. Please look on my screen. You know the word fallacy already, okay? Uh, and Ejaya, thank you. So we'll ask the next person to read. Just be on standby. We need you. We'll come back again. Abdallah, read for me. Joshua, be on standby. Your next. Causal fallacies, unit 9, activity uh, 4.1. Errors in cause and effects reasoning. Post hoc ego proper hoc. After this, Therefore, because of this, if you conclude that just because something happened just before another, then it is cause it. See how proximate cause could fall easily into this trap. Confusing cause with effect. Very good. Very That's all I want to show you. Okay. We will study the others later. It's a good time to show you post hoc ego proctor hoc. That's all I wanted. So everyone watch. That is a fallacy. It has a name. It has a long name, eh? like Nancy Mao. Something like that. <laughs> okay, so the name is post hoc ego propter hoc. What does it mean? That's Latin. If you translate it, it's after this, therefore, because of this. That fallacy says because something happened just before it, so you say it caused it. Proximity is all you are using. So when we're driving on the highway, a black cat crossed us. No, then our car hit the tree. That part is dangerous. Uh, I'm not saying it's true or false. I'm just raising my query. What is the connection? Could it be that it has nothing to do with it? Could it be that I may be causing the fallacy called post hoc ego propter hoc? Someone enters the room and then the light goes off. Maybe we're watching Ghana match. Ghana with uh, Comoros or some chief team. Already your heart nah, is destroyed. Then there's a penalty they are going to play. They are going to play. They want to see how it turns out if we have some. Baby. As soon as hmm, the day goes back, back, but it's going to play. No, then <laughs> your daughter, your daughter, or your younger sister comes with her pet. 
Mommy, please, uh, no light up. Or, or, when is Mommy, please, can you check my room? No, they, they place the thing over the back. You see what you do to the little girl. Who's crying? You know, you can move from there. You see that you made them cry. You see that they are here. Is she on the field? She's in Ghana here. The people are somewhere in Azabada. And they're on the field. Yet, if you are not careful, you take it on the little child. Because you think that it was just when she said, can you check my iPad for me, auntie? No, then the boy entered the net against that. So you cannot have I have gone through that and it's in my example. So I'll let after I read my example that I'm going to project shortly for post hoc ego propter hoc. Why did we look at that fallacy immediately? Because you are likely going to commit it when you think of course in terms of what proximity. Okay. So read it, please. The first one. Examples of causal fallacies content. Post hoc ego propter hoc. After this, therefore, because of this. As soon as I hanged baby Ella, as a Mojan scored the penalty for Ghana. So, whenever the Black Stars need to score a penalty, I will spank baby Ella. It happened to me, one of my children, but I suspect it was either Michael or Ella. What happened? Ghana is going to play a penalty. I think it was Asama. Afan Asamaja. And your papa and your bonnet. That brother. <laughs> I like his dream. I like his dream dread. Hey, even my dream fan who say me I can't survive. You go and sport, sport penalty. Can you live in Ghana? You oh, mind if you can play? Go and play. All right. So the guy is behind the ball, and then picture, picture this little girl. Picture, picture she come my little girl. Mommy, oh, I so cry on my other day. Panai on her bottom. Jam out. Panai. No, I had go. Hey. Therefore, I'm coming to conclude. <laughs> Whenever Ghana is playing, cannot score. This guy. When the a prophetic whatever mantle, I hit the bottom. <laughs> and I go. When you start thinking that way, you are committing post hoc ego After it, therefore, you conclude it was because of it. That is the fallacy that you are likely to commit. Whenever you think, of course, only in terms of what proximity. Very good. Now we go back to where we were. Thank you, Abdallah. So Joshua, your next video on Samba, I'm, I'm going back to where we were on diagnosing possible causes of things. Okay, so on my screen, after we knew the connotations of the word cause, we want to look at how then that we can, as critical minds, think through the possible cause. Here, it's induction. Like I told you, so if we have all these pack, uh, uh, information available to us, how would we then diagnose what could possibly have been the effect? And we do it in an informed way. Okay, so that is the the whole purpose. There are four ways. So there is a method of agreement, the method of difference, the joint method of agreement and difference, and then concomitant variation method of concomitant variation. These are coming from a fine philosopher of science. He's called J.S. Mill, John Stuart Mill. Okay, he's a philosopher whose philosophy is on scientific methods, okay, how the scientist is doing his work. So the medical doctor may diagnose after he hears some information from the patients that have been rushed into his outfit, is able to tell what could possibly have caused the, the effect that he's having. So let's say two people are sitting in front of him. They were rushed from a school, go for bed at eh? and, and what has happened is the, 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 the students are running. Apologies, eh? Plenty. And it is dangerous. It's, the way they are, they are visiting the loo like that, it could lead to death. So we want to know what went wrong. Okay, there are several ways of diagnosing what could possibly be causing that effect of running. One of the methods you can use is the method of agreement. The other is called the method of difference. We have the joint method of agreement and difference, or the method we call what concomitant variation. Okay, and so let's look at 
the first method. Look on your screen, everyone, please. For the method of agreement, which helps us explain what could possibly, not certainly, eh, what could possibly have been the likely cause of the effect. One of the methods is uh, the method of agreement. What does it say? Look at the effect. Everyone, what's the effect? Let me see if you are there or you are asleep. Or mute and run. What's the effect? Run. You are running run. for all the run. 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 Thank you. All. Run. So we see you are run. running. Then you know the running I have in mind. <laughs> Not the running we do with Alex, the other one. <laughs> okay. So the, 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 yes, yes. The patients are running. They are all running. That's the effect. So the effect is the same, same throughout. Now, what is the antecedent condition? We are trying to diagnose. So we are the medical doctors there. The people are four people person one, person two, person three, person four. Each of them took a certain combination of meals. So look, person one ate some rice with fish, vegetables, juice, and then after everything, she chopped up with ice cream. Okay. Person <laughs> two did yam, fish, and water, but she also took cream. And so the third person, I think the third person is an Ashanti man, you know. <laughs> My people. So she took Fufu, light soup chicken, but she topped up with cream. The fourth person maybe was in the month of Ramadan, maybe my Muslim friend. So when she, she was breaking her fast, then she took bread, porridge, and some small granite, but also added some cream. Now, you would see that they took different meals. Please listen, it's very relatively technical. If you don't get you get confused. So we'll do the method of difference. But see what makes a method a method of agreement. For all the four people, they have different meals, but one meal is common. Common. It's common. It's running through all. So if you look at some other content, you see they call it common thread. One thread that is running through all of them. It's common. It agrees. That's where the name is coming from. In all the different meals that the people had, one thing is common. What is it? Look at it, all of you. And I'll say, 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 I'll you see that persons one and two took fish together. They all took fish. Person one and two. But we can't give attention to the fish because three and four didn't take fish. Yet the effect which we are investigating happened there also. It happened with three and four. So you cannot say that it is the fish necessarily. You don't have grounds to say that. That is causing the running because where there wasn't fish, in three and four, the running still occurred. Okay, so you have to go further and see what is this common thing that runs through all the antecedent conditions, so that we can suspect it as the possible cause of what the effect. Why? Because the effect runs through all of them. Also, that's the method of agreement. So, by the method of agreement, Joshua, please read the summary below there for me. Let me take water. Go ahead. I Mills method of agreement. The probable cause of the running is the cream. This is because the suspected antecedent condition agrees with the effect. Wherever the cream is, the running also occurs. So it's very good. Cause, the possible cause of fallacy associated with this is the fallacy of confusing correlation for casual connection. For causal connection. Very good, Joshua. So before we go to here again, I'm showing you a certain possible fallacy that you can commit when you go by the method of agreement. Okay. So I'm teaching you I'm teaching you both alongside so that it's easier for you to grab. The method itself that we want to use to diagnose what possibly caused it. I'm a medical doctor. I have to save children that have been brought into my outfit. Vomiting. Oh, oh, oh. Hey. What is happening? We don't know what happened to say at assembly. 
all these people in this class say, ah, why? Say, mm. So they are running and vomiting and it's, it's getting okay. What is it? So we have to quickly do some first aid. And then once we do that, we diagnose, answer some questions for us. Did they all eat the same? They say, no, no, no. They are from different homes. So this morning, we have not, we have not gone for dining. It's dining time that we eat. Are you watching? We all eat at one place and eat the same. But they came from different homes. I mean, this class, four class. Okay. What did they eat? This person ate rice. This person, this, 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 this. so different meals. That's what I'm showing you. Then the doctor will still have to go further, or if you're an investigator or a mother, a grandma, or something. She, so the method is not restricted to anywhere. He said, Well, didn't they have anything? Is there nothing that they ought to? Oh, I, I can't remember. Then uh, uh, one of the students said, No, 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 Auntie, please. When, when the people came to do the, re, uh, the research at school, they brought the toffee that they said we should, uh, we should taste and then comment on it so that they need to do their research. So our class. That's where they started. They will come in the afternoon to do class two and class three. So every child in the room, after eating their different meals, tasted that toffee. It's a toffee that they say, we'll take it and let's see so that we will improve it. We're trying to bring a product to the market. It didn't intend to come and kill. But I think that maybe that is what will be running through. See what I just did? And it turns out just after that, they, all the children are running. We have good reason to say that there has to be something about the toffee that is causing the run. It might be the wrapper that was used to wrap the toffee. It might be the container that they put the toffee inside had some worms in it. It might be a thousand and one reason. But something about the cream in our example on the screen is generating the effect of running. And that is probable, it's a probability matter. It is not a certainty. That's why the reasoning is in that too. So I just showed you that. And you see that when we go to the next one, we'll run a bit faster. I want you to get it. That's how I'm slow with this. The possible fallacy you can commit with this is called confusing correlation. That two things correlate. They happen at the same time. Frequently. See that? There's a frequency. It's not one of they happen at the same time doesn't mean one brings about the other, one causes the other. The two happen at the same time. Whenever you are taking the bend at that watchy seller's junction there, you are driving to school. Whenever you take that bend, the watchy seller will do all, all the, the prayer, the Muslim prayer, the, the guy who calls for prayer, the, how do you say, the imam, eh? the one who calls for prayer at the, the Muslim. Yeah, Imoazin, thank you. Imoazin, thank you. Well, Imam, Imoazin, there is a calling. Okay. As soon as I take that curve at the watch the next job, she will pour the dirty water and I'll hear the Imoazin call for prayer. It happens at the same time. It doesn't mean it is my Ben taking my sharp curve at that time that is making him call for prayer. It's just a coincidence, if you like. They happen at the same time. So I'm trying to beat the traffic. So I'm early. And he is calling for prayer. And his calling for prayer is not what fuels my It's not the fuels that my car is running. It's just not that one that makes my car theater. They are correlating, doesn't mean they are causally connected. See the difference? So if you are not careful, the two things may be happening at the same time. And wherever there was cream, there was running. And perhaps there is no causal connection whatsoever. It's just a coincidence. So confusing a correlation for causal connection is a possible fallacy. That is why you have to look out for that and not think that, oh, they agree. Therefore, you have necessarily established. It might not be a causal connection. It might just be a correlation. Joshua, please read the example on that. So I'll go and show you that fallacy as well. And we come and finish up. On my screen now, confusing correlation for causal connection is the second, the third fallacy. Please read. Okay. Causal fallacy. It's okay. Errors in cause and effect reasoning. Post hoc ergo post hoc. After this. Please read the third one, the number three. The number three, okay. Confusing correlation for causal connection. Good the job. fact that two things. The fact that two things happen at the same time does not necessarily suggest that 
one brought out brought about the other. Very good. Here yeah, is an number. example. Yes, don't read the number four. I'm showing you an example now. Okay. So confusing correlation for causal connection. Read the example. I noticed that people infected with COVID-19 sneeze. So no, that is not lot. that is not confusing correlation. That one is confusing cause with effect. It's another fallacy. Please read this one. Confusing correlation for causal connection. Okay. Since this semester's lectures began, whenever Dr. Mouse is ending her lecture, the clock strikes 1 p.m. She must be powerful because she moves even the clock. <laughs> this is the point. Uh -huh. yes. That is a fallacy. Yeah, that's a fallacy. The fallacy here is it, is, it might just be a coincidence that when I am rounding off my lecture to say, okay, thank you all very much, have a wonderful week, all the best and take care. Then the clock will be saying, grind, grind. It's not my ending the lecture that makes the clock act. It doesn't cause it. They just happen at the same time. And it is recurrent. It, was, it is always happening that way. Doesn't mean they are necessarily causally connected. So this fallacy is called confusing a correlation to be what? A causal connection. I hope you got it. Very good. And that could happen when you are thinking or, or you are diagnosing causes based on what? Agreement. What is the method of agreement? They have different meals except one that they have in common. And so the effect is also what? One. Running through. So we say that it agrees, there's an antecedent condition that agrees in all of them. And therefore the effect also agrees, the method of agreement. Now look at the method of difference. It is the opposite. Everyone look at the effect. Do we have a common effect for method of difference? I want a chorus answer. Yes. Can people hear no. me? Ah. Yes. Look at the effect. Look at the effect. Yes, please. Yes. No, Listen please. to my question. Listen to my no, question. Do we have no, the same effect? No. For different no, please. No, 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 please. No, please. Okay, some of you are sleeping. No. Just no, both you all up. <laughs> no. No. Okay, please. so that should tell you. Whereas person one is running, person two is not running. So the effect is not the same, the effect is different. I'm showing you signs to look out for, to determine whether you have a method of agreement or a method, a method of difference, okay? Which of the methods should you use? Effects are different. So if you want to diagnose immediately, it should tell you that something is different in the antecedent conditions. That's what you are going to look for. So look at what happens, the method that we call the method of difference. When you check, you interview the sick children or their teachers who brought them, and you find out that they all had the same thing. See the difference now? See, this one, they didn't bring different meals from home. And that the only thing that is common is the toffee that the researchers brought. No. Here, they all went to canteen, school canteen. I don't know how you call it now. When I was a child, they called it canteen. The mine designer, I don't know. <laughs> Now, when you go to canteen, you all eat the same thing. It was part of the uniform thing. Same socks, same shoe, same bag. Just you want to ask. You have to work the same way. Haircut, earring. Okay, so canteen to same food. Everyone ate it. The same. Which method are we doing? The method of different. But why are you talking same? Watch. They are the same thing. Except. So there comes the exception. There comes the difference. Something is different in the antecedent. And so the effect is also different. If you got that, I can show you now. Watch. So here, they all ate rice, some wachi, and ice cream. But the first child, the twin, number one, wanted mango juice. So he said, please, auntie, I want mango juice, one cup. After she did the wachi and rice combination plus ice cream, she went for mango juice. The second twin plays football, so he wants heavy. 
After all, the designer can team meals. He, he went for fufu as what? Dessert. Now, when they finish, one of them is running, the other is not running. From the scenario I've given, what do you think is the likely probable cause of the running? All of us. Mango. 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 Yeah, do you see that it might, it might not be the mango, but if we have to suspect anything, it is the mango we are expecting and start investigation. Yes. Why? Because that is what is different from the antecedent condition, and therefore we see a difference in the effect. That's a method of difference. Not anything technical, okay? So you know agreement is no different. Agreement, they eat different meals, but one thing is common, and so the effect is also common. Difference, they eat the same meal, but something is different, and so the effect is also different. Joint method of agreement and difference is the third way of diagnosing the possible cause. That one, it is like the method of difference, except that you are not dealing with one person versus another one person. You are dealing with a group of persons who took mango and they are all running versus a group of persons who didn't take mango and are not running. So, so it strengthens the degree let me see people. Yes. Yeah. What did you hear? <laughs> it increases the likelihood. Yes. I wanted to say yes. likelihood. I wanted, I wanted to say degree. So it, the blend wasn't too friendly. Yes. You see, it increases the chances, the likelihood that there is something about the mango that causes all the running. And then there is something about the fufu that does not allow. How do you know that? Because it wasn't one person versus another one person. If it were so, then you might think that maybe something else is underneath that we didn't notice. But if all those who were in rooms three and four, or all the ladies who used that table, suppose when we went, the ladies of that, uh, we went for couples retreats or something, about 300 people went, everyone in the party. So when it was time, they did the, the, the grouping, they sectioned this out. So women are at one side of the room and then guys are at another side. And they said women with mango after they all ate the main meal, mango juice, but the guys ate the food as dessert. Then it turns out, see, so ladies, 150 ladies, 150 gentlemen. And then it turns out that all those who ate the mango are running, all of them. Then all those who didn't eat, are not running. That's a stronger version because it is not just one man and the wife where the one lady took mango and the husband didn't take. We would have asked maybe it is her makeup or the water she has changed. But if it's all these people, then it is stronger. So we call it a joint method of agreement and difference. What is the agreement based? It agrees within the women, persons one to ten, that mango is leading to running. What's the difference? It differs between the two parties, the men versus the women, or persons one to 10 versus persons 11 to 20, who didn't take it. It's a stronger version. Then the very last one, concomitant variation, the method. Now that you suspect the mango, you can further test to establish causal connection. Everyone watch. Because we already said maybe it's just appearing wherever you see mango, you see running, and yet perhaps there is no cause and effect connection. See that? So we don't want to cause co uh, confusing correlation for causal connection fallacy. So we can do a further test to see something. The sister is a roommate, and every three days she gets asthmatic attack. They will take her to the hospital. But if she's at home, that, that, that don't come like that. Three days, I live for three days, two days, rampant, recurrent. So the hospital sister, or even the roommate, colleague in the lecture hall said, ah, you will keep getting this. You are missing your class assignments or whatever. It's so stressful. Why? Yeah, it doesn't happen to me at home. Before we keep, we quickly go and say that it is Yanom or something. It could be Yanom, you know, the spiritual thing. It's fine. You can catabro your way out of that. You just do the 
category, but we would want to do a proper diagnosis as well. The one that is empirically grounded. Not knowing the roommate removes his kambu, his foot, <laughs> and leaves it at where this sister's, uh, no, if they are roommates, they will be brothers there, eh? and leaves it where the brother's pillow is. Every blessed day, this guy too is a working matata. He can walk, no cash. So he works a lot throughout the day. In the evening, he lose the shoe and put it where sister, uh, how do I say this? The, the roommate pillow is. You know, as my don't want too strong centered area. Or maybe where her pillow is, is where the gardener bends the rubbish after weaving. So every three days, uh, and people do that, they are considerate to auntie. So every three days, he will come and burn it and go. But once I return, you don't see the smoke, but the effect of the smoke is still there. So every three days, we'll be attacked. Now we want to establish to see, is, there, is, is this something in the room that is called? Or maybe she just changed the roommate and started using such a, another perfume. They've been in the room for maybe two months. I'm giving you different scenarios. Sister doesn't get an attack. But recently, every three days, since two weeks, every three days, they rush her to the hospital. <laughs> so we want to check. Have you changed the cream you use? She says no. Have you, is your roommate using a certain bed? She says no. It's just nowadays, because I study towards exam, we stay out a while. So I put on repellent. Well, possibly that is what is causing it. We are not sure yet. Watch everyone. So we want to establish a causal connection. Then we do it and we see that whenever she puts on the repellent, she gets an attack. If she doesn't put it on, she doesn't get the attack. But maybe it's just coincidence, like we said. So now let's intentionally, there we go with concomitant variation. Look. Concomitant means an accompanying and variation means varying. So when it varies, the effect varies whenever the antecedent condition varies. It means there is an accompanying variation. Variation is change, either changing upwards or downwards. Eh? There is a change that occurs in the effect. When you change the antecedent, then we realize that, ah, that then they are causally connected. That's why when you alter this one, it alters the other. So how do we do this? So if we could bring the lady to the hospital under observation and then intentionally smear her whole body with what? The repeller. This time, not as models. Watch my screen, please. We do plenty because we are trying to check to see if that is what is causing the effect. Okay? So look at person one. We increase the mango. What, what are we doing? I want to see if it will lead to an increase in the running. Maybe morning, afternoon, evening. That is how she was using the loo. Okay. So one tissue, then by the close of the day, she was running. But we want to see if it's going bad, we can quickly mitigate it and restore. But they have to establish a certain causal connection. So they give you plenty of the mango. Maybe you took just a glass of it and it is yielding that effect that we suspect. We will now give you four glasses, but under what monitoring to see what happens. And imagine if you were giving four glasses. Now the tea will, you take four. <laughs> you are visiting the loo two or three times every 30 seconds. You see what? There has to be some connection. The same with the sister with the repellent on her body. Suppose as soon as we smeared it, the attack, it is not a slow one, it is so sharp, she can't even hold her breath for a minute. Then we say, ah, voila, that is it. Sometimes you do it when you suspect, uh, when you have a, I don't know what allergies. You give the person more snail and seafood in the okra stew to see how the rashes will be. So just in case initially there were just some few rashes on the skin, she took that you don't know if it is the crab meat that she went to take at the party. That Papa came with some crab. She went to try. When she came, she, she had some rashes, some 
fresh rashes on her skin. We, we don't know what is bringing that, but she takes care of her skin well. We suspect the crab, so it's a suspicion. So we say, okay, buy more crabs. Now this time we buy plenty, she's at home. Then she eats not just one small tiny crab on her papansa that someone did for her, but they cook it plenty in a bowl and give her, just in case by afternoon, evening, the next day, her whole body is full of the rashes. We immediately have good reason, a higher percentage, a probability to believe by concomitant variation method that a thing has to do with a crab. So we can tell you you're allergic to crab or you don't like milk, uh, lactose, or whatever, or you don't like this kind of perfume. So don't use it and stuff like that. That is the method called concomitant variation. I believe that we were patient with it and you had it. So let me ask the class, I want chorus answers. Give me any, any of the connotations of the word course. Don't look at your slide. I have project, let's look on my screen and answer. It's not there, so answer any connotation of the word course, quickly. Everyone says something. Agent. 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 Thank you all. So most of you got it correct, but I had confusing correlation. That is not a connotation of the word course. Okay, so the person who said it now, you know, if it was Ezra Manka, M M Y. That's why I like the cross answers like you see. So when I say the various connotations of the word course, I'm referring to the first batch, the ones we saw earlier, the various meanings you can give to the word course. So your friends mentioned plenty, necessity, sufficiency, uh, uh, agent, so agent, proximity, probability, you know, those ones. Those are the connotations. Good job. Now, please tell me, and I want to cross answer again. The, very, the various methods of explaining or diagnosing the possible causes of effect, at least according to what JS knows. What are they? I want to call us Method of difference, agreement, concomitant variation, joint. Well now we can move on and finish up with fallacies. We are done. The fallacies where well, we have done two already. Can you tell me some causal fallacies you know? Any two? I want a chorus answer. Post hoc ego. Well done. Well done, everyone. Oh, well. So the two at least that we've learned are post hoc ego propter hoc. When you see your friend, call them post hoc. Let them respond ego propter hoc. When you finish your kit card, thank you, get your 96%. Bam. You can forget it. <laughs> okay. So call yourselves that. Which you see your friend, call him modus ponens. Who your two lens for? Ah, the other person, who are disjointed. Just for you to keep it. Okay. And then, uh, the, apart from post hoc, I go from the hoc, which is after this. So you say it caused it. We also know confusing correlation. So my sister, who thought of correlation as part of the connotations, now I'm sure it's clear. It's a fallacy associated with one of them. Post hoc, I go from the hoc is a fallacy that you could easily commit if you thought of cause only in terms of proximity because it's it is dealing with i've done that with you then confusing correlation for causal connection is a fallacy that is so close you know so close to reasoning or explaining in terms of all the method of agreement now we'll do the third one so i take lois and then sam and quay to Lois first. Lois Baba. Hey, Baba, Anna Baba, Baba, I'm there, Baba. Lois, please read the causal fallacies from beginning to end. Causal fallacy. Good. The first one post hoc ego propter hoc. 
after this, Good therefore, job. because of this. If you conclude that just because something happened just before another, then it caused it. See how proximate cause could fall easily into this trap. Good. Read the next one. Confusing cause with effect. There is an established causal connection, but in your reasoning, you replace the supposed cause with the supposed effect. So let me explain this one because I've not told you that one. You know post hoc ego propter hoc. You know confusing correlation for causal connection, the one and the three, you know them. Now, one and three, there isn't any established causal connection. There isn't a cause and effect relationship between the two, uh, the two supposed uh, cause and effect. We haven't established that one brought about the other. When we do post hoc ego propter hoc, there might not be any cause and effect connection between those two events. Okay, the same with point three, confusing correlation for causal connection. There might not be any causal connection. One is not bringing about the other. They are just happening at the same time. For example, three. For example, one. One just happened before the other one. They don't have any cause and effect connection. Okay, but look at. Example two, what Madame just read, confusing cause with effect. That one, there is a causal connection. One of the conditions brought about the other. Only one, it brought it about. But the problem there is you are confusing the mother with the baby. It is the mother that pushed the baby up. It is the cause that brings about the effect. And not the effect that brings about the cause. Okay? So the criticism there is confusing the cause with what the effect. You make you are reasoning in a way that makes it look as if it is the effect rather that brings about the cause. For example, sister, read example one. Confusing cause with effect. I noticed that I know people infected with COVID-19 sneeze and cough a lot. So I'm not going to cough or sneeze because I don't want to catch the COVID-19 infection. Can you see what is happening there? Thank you, my lady. The person is saying, he himself or is saying, I notice that people who are infected with COVID-19 sneeze and cough a lot. The thing is, it is the infection that leads to sneezing and coughing. From what he, or he himself said, okay, we are looking at the evidence. When people are infected with COVID, then it causes sneezing and coughing, says the one speaking. Then he goes further to tell you, so I am not going to cough or sneeze. What is his reason? Because I don't want to get COVID-19. Is it the coughing and sneezing that causes the COVID, or it is the COVID that causes the sneezing and coughing by his own argument. That is the problem. It's confusing cause with what effect. It's like cholera. Apologies here. Eh? It's hospital scenarios most of the time that we are using. If I have cholera, God forbid, then it will yield a certain effect, which is what running and the other one. But if I say, if someone argues that me, I don't want to get cholera, so I am not going to poop or vomit my life again. The person is confusing the cause with the effect. That, that is what Madame read. Thank you very much, Lois. Let me take Sam now. Quay, be on standby. Sam, read the fourth fallacy. We are done. Everyone, eh? we are done. Ignoring a common underlining cause where there may be a correlation or connection, but not necessarily the cause, since there could be further conditions or effect events responsible for the effect. Very good. Here, there is a possible causal connection, but that one is not the only one that could yield the effect. So when you ignore something that is common, Eh? We are ignoring a common something else that is a cause, but it is underneath. It underlies it. It doesn't present itself openly. You don't see that as what is bringing about the effect. 
but a can so if you ignore it you will think that it is all about the one that you saw as the antecedent condition that is yielding the effect see that there might be other you see people got COVID and they didn't die by the grace of god but they did because they didn't have underlying conditions others got the COVID, and the COVID supposedly supposedly caused the death so we blame the COVID, but if you go into it closely, you would see that it's because maybe they had a lung issue or breath issue or diabetes or some underlying condition that together with the infection generated what? The cause, uh, the infection. See? So the point is, whilst diagnosing and thinking around cause and effect, the critical thinker is drawing our attention to something. Be careful not to be blaming only the visible supposed cause of an effect. You may be ignoring or overlooking something else that is common to the, in other words, the common underlying cause, something else that is there, but it is underneath. Let's read an example to help that. So say, read this, <coughs> overlooking or ignoring a common underlying cause. Right. Overlooking, ignoring a common underlying cause. My roommates both have laptops and they got and both got A's in the IGRC 150. So if I want to get an A in this course, I should get a laptop as soon as possible. <laughs> now, yes, having the laptop may have generated the A may have may have what may have contributed to the effect. See, it played a role because then you're able to download, they are able to access online lectures, then you can quickly submit your work. No, I will and take yours and, and submit because you don't have a machine to meet deadlines, blah, 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 blah. So it contributed, but one person can also have the laptop and still not get an A because they clean the laptop nicely and put it at the top shelf in the room there and said, ah, God, thank you that I have a laptop. Now, we guess you, we are guessing, Papa, 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 God, you are great, but the laptop is up there. If he brings it down or she brings it down, is to watch recipes, to learn how to do cake or something, you know, or is to watch Comoros, <laughs> Crip, Ghana. Oh, never mind Ghana. So having a laptop, over, is it the way that people are laughing? <laughs> it's not enough. Oh. You may be ignoring something else that is common to that effect you are seeing, which is what the roommates, those two roommates that you see had laptops and so got A, may also have been studying reading announcements with that laptop, uh -huh. attending lectures, obeying simple instructions. When they say circle, they circle. When they say tick, they tick. Where well, they are not sure whether they should tick because the instructor says tick, but they are not sure. They ask questions and they get the information they need. All those factors went into it. You see two couples coming and say, hey, this church, all their weddings, their people live and marry 15 years, 17 years. All the couples that marry 16 years, 17 years, I am attending that church. So, because me too, I want to make sure that when I enter into my marriage, it takes 15 years, we are still in love. Good job that you have monitored and seen at least two couples or three of them still in marriage, 40 years anniversary, 50 years anniversary. Have you asked yourself what the underlying causes may be? You may be ignoring. So it's not about, I'm also going to attend that yet. Because you may attend in your 30 minutes after marriage. Even when you finish signing or you are signing the next one for divorce. It's like OP. <laughs> you are being. The point then is, you may be overlooking something else. That is a contribution and it is common to the two okay, the owner, huh, that you have observed for which reason you are also going to do that don't ignore in other words look out for the holistic course not just takes out course so they, they, this boy there comes from this so they paid the school fees on time some of their school fees were paid even before they got admission but Cat, Dada, her father, are their friends. You know, Cat, C for Cat, D for Dada, E for Iba, and F for Cat. Those are their friends. 
It's not when your school fees was paid necessarily. Yes, pay it on time if there is resources so that you have a peace of mind to focus. But others too can pay on time. They won't learn nothing. Lecture credit, no. Announcement for IUCRA, they don't know where it is. So if you make that one the course and say that we, we nah, yeah, I was good, but when I was in SHS, mass, the way I was good at it. And, and then what happened? Oh, my, my uncle, what is, you took a uh, property that. So you are going to sit there and make your uncle's property that he took from you be the reason why now you don't know math. So what do you want to know? <laughs> it is one of the contributions, yes. But you have to see that there are underlying factors as well. It's holistic. If you are able to deal with those other ones, that's what he has taken, he has taken. He's taking, he shall take. You can't stop it. But there is something else you can do. If he's taking and there's more coming in, we'll let back and move. Why won't you create your own? Diagnosing the causes help you to respond to the challenges. The colonialists, and if they didn't come and they didn't do this to Africa, and this 67 years, name and Ghana, they are still talking the colonialists. Yes, remind ourselves of it, then it will help us to reach it. But not to, it will make us go with a, a, a begging bowl again. Now we very. So we have to diagnose well. There may be a contributory factor that has been overlooked. Yes, the colonialists wanted to do some, but some people also wanted to sell their own friends and brothers and sisters to get a quotation and matches. It is part of the story. So that whilst we work at external factors, we should be interested in internal factors as well. That's for the political scientists and the policy makers. We can go to check, we can go to everyone. And so if you saw that, then the fallacy we call ignoring a common underlying cause is what I have explained and put flesh to. The very last one, my dear say, and I want, um, I think I asked, was it Joshua is the one reading now, so it, Sam is the one reading, so it should be Quay, Annabelle, and then Joel will read the example for that. Annabelle Quay, please read the last fallacy. Okay, ma. Genetic fallacy. Accepting, rejecting a view because of antecedent conditions, like when and where it originated from. Thank Very you. good. Yeah. Welcome. Let's find an example and then I'll elaborate and we'll go home. Big boss, please read yours. So this is the example of a genetic fallacy. Uh, I mentioned the name. Let me go to that slide. Please, are you there? Our time is up. Let's go. It was Quay. Oh, it was a lady. I'm sorry. Annabelle. Annabelle Ellen Quay. Anna, please read for me. Eh? Okay. Or should okay, I call no, the next person? Go ahead. Go ahead. Please, I can read. Please, sorry. Mm -hmm. So, genetic fallacy. Examples yeah. of casual fallacies. Genetic fallacy. The theory that we are expected to memorize is the most recent received view is proposed by an American Nobel Prize physicist who worked with the greatest nuclear physicists at the best laboratories in the world during the 1960s. So the theory must be true. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, and the people will be clapping. Thank you, my lady. See that all the people will be clapping. Move, move, move. Wow, wow, wow. And I'm sitting there and I'm sad. Say, I want mm -hmm. to say something so we laugh. It's a genius. Genius. <laughs> It's just for us to laugh. Look, the genesis of something is nothing. Critically thinking, where it came from, what has it done? Something can come from a place that you disparage. Can anything good come from Nazareth? Yes. Yes, that's why I'm not too worried about people who it looks like their antecedents are supposedly, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. Do you know what Rehab in the Bible? Bible called her Pro. You can con conclude it. Pro. Pro. But she's mentioned you and I. Where is her name in the Bible? Me, I don't see mouse in the Bible. Pro is in the Bible. <laughs> in the Bible, the antecedents of people don't matter. You have to understand this product is coming from so and so place. So wholesale, we imbibe it. Have you checked the size of your forehead? 
and how it is that this one it was uh, so and so i don't want to mention any uh, you know uh, celebrity but so and so does that hairstyle look at her forehead look at yours how, why are you going to impose a certain political system that may 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 is a word may not other one for your setting noise think about these things very well so why is it that democracy so I want something that is useful for government. Okay? Democracy is practiced in UK, in US. But UK has killed up as part of its democratic system. Up to today, a US doesn't. Have you thought about it very well? <laughs> but the whole democracy rule of the self by the self, the collective self. They rule themselves. You look at your cloth and you cut it to suit you look at your forehead look at your shoulder as soon as you make it your preoccupation so oh, this one is coming for, oh this this should is american i don't want to pick that pick on it yeah people eh? but we we like that so colonially ment mentalized i don't say colonial mentality this one hey, 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 so and so play straight so what tell me what it has the quality Tell me this one is durable. The letter is the one that we get from so-and-so animal or so-and-so. Because something can be coming from a supposed fine place, but it may have been altered or engineered or wasted. But they are coming to test it on you to make this better and vice versa. So you cannot say just because it is a China product. You see how we say, I say what do we say China? You say China, China. So what? China has good things, plenty. And they have bad things to plenty, like any nation. So if you make it because of the things, genesis, you see this again, what we do for informal fallacy. Unless you are in 10, we are done with the code. Hmm? Informal fallacy, genetic fallacy will appear again. It is a causal fallacy because, as well, because it says because of the things cause. Who caused it in tea? Accept it. Who is everybody? Yeah, your educational system is an American business. Is this is low in Ghana. It's low in America. And here, look at your coat, latte with tie that you are wearing under the sun. Don't get dropped. Where did it go? The coat is fine. If it fits the setting, why? You should feel free. But look at us. The American will say six o'clock grind, and the system that is set will make you able to get there at six. It's not in the person's makeup to be late. It's systemic. The train will reach the station seven five. If you say seven five, seven five, you could have traveled a little. Seven five, we do an age now. If you come seven six, it's gone. But there might be seven ten bus coming. Or if it's UK, UK the tubes are there, the underground thing. So you cannot be late because the system is set in such a way that you will be there. Look at my own throat, we can walk the traffic. So when I'm importing something wholesale, you see how much time I'm spending with genetic fallacy? And I make it look as if, oh, that is what it, they are doing. I heard recently, I don't know how to do it. Is, that uh, renting, go and see how expensive rent are, so and so please. Maybe that place has done a lot of social housing, freely accessible. So if you don't want those ones that has been done and made available and accessible to you, want any classy bullshit thing, then you pay more. What about my, me, my Ghana? National service. My nation, Ghana, is doing a lot of things good, but some people are not. We are critical minds. That's all we can do to contribute eh, to our welfare. So we want to be careful how we do a wholesale acceptance or something, or a wholesale rejection of something because of its source. When you do that, it's genetic balance. You may be bringing an educational system that is working fine somewhere. Bring it in, tweak it a bit. Sister, thank you, Kwa, when they give you from a group sheet, but you amend it a little. You will hold some part and do the gardens and hold the waste a so it will fit you. Don't say, this one, my sister at America brought it. So you wear it gum. When you step out, it's like gum. Are you going to sleep? Or you are going for a party. But a little stitch here, a little stitch there to fit your size would have made it fine. You will only think of stitching and adjusting 
if you realize that the thing may be coming from here or there, but it is not necessarily perfect. The source, therefore, doesn't necessar necessarily ground it is goodness or badness in itself. You have to interrogate it on what rational grounds. And on that note, Agwena, any question? Yep. Thank you, uh, Joshua, and my, my friend. Thank you all. Oh, I see the reaction. So thank you, Lois, and all. Now, I want to give two minutes if, you, if we are able to. Yeah, thank you. Take your questions. So I'll lower all the hands. Annabelle, thank you. Too. I'll lower all the hands. And then those who have a question, I'll give you two or three questions. If you still have them after everything else, you can send an email and respond to them. Okay, so the, all the hands are down now. Please ask your question. Thank you. If you have a question, please raise your hand. And ask. Oscar, go ahead, Ignatius. Please unmute first. Doc, doc, please, can you go over the confusing correlation for casual connections? The word is causal, eh? not casual. It's causal from the, like you're saying, cause, but you say causal. Uh -huh. okay, correlation means they are happening at the same time. So the two things are happening at the same time. They both happen at the same time. Coincidentally, it is not one of the things that is making the other one happen, it's bringing it about. So whenever you are passing in front of that building, the woman who sells the plantain will be blowing the granite. Maybe at the time you come and pass, she's also blowing her granite. You are going for your lecture, which is 7.30 lecture. She's also setting up to sell her plantain. It's not your passing by that makes her blow the granite to come and pack it into a disposable. You see that? It's a coincidental thing that happens all the time, consistently. So it is a correlation. The two events correlate. You are passing by and her blowing the ground correlate. It is not a cause and effect relationship. It's not your passing by that makes her hands start blowing the ground or her blowing the ground that makes you come to pass by. It is just a coincidence of what two activities. So someone who sees these two things happening at the same time all the time may read a causal connection into it. So we say you are confusing correlation for what a causal connection. I hope that helps. Oscar. Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Ilya. Oscar. Also, you also do Oscar. Please unmute, William. Okay, madam. Please, um, William, I didn't get ahead. the concept. Yes, please, madam. Please, ma'am. I didn't get the concept of the genetic fallacy rule. Genetic is from the word genesis. So when you accept a claim because of its genesis, its origin, where it came from, we we'll say you are committing a genetic fallacy. And if you reject a claim just because of where it came from, we we'll also say you are committing a genetic fallacy. It means your accepting or rejecting something should not be based necessarily on where it came from. Keke. Keke. Just that. It came from America, so it's good. Or it came from China, so it's bad. Um, that's what we have a problem with. So the person who is giving that uh, uh, policy is an Adventist, so we shouldn't listen. Or the person who is a charismatic, like me, and she, we shouldn't listen. What has the person, look at the merits of the matter. That's what we are trying to emphasize. Okay, so when you make the decision about a view, acceptable or unacceptable because of the source of the view, it is problematic. The reasoning, the logic behind it is sick. And that is what we are calling out as for genetic fallacy. Does that help, William? Yes, please, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you all very much. And finish hard. You have unit 10 only to go. If I were you, I'll be mopping up my unit 6, unit 7, unit 9 that we've done today, and then preparing for unit 10, which is on informal fallacy. It's very accessible, very easy. You have fine slides from one of my colleagues. I put out the resource too that you can rely on.
all the best and take care. Bye bye for now. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone. Lady Lucy, thank you very much. Go for tutorial, everyone. You'll be there. The tutors will be there in the TH. Yeah, we'll we'll okay. sure. Thank you. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Doc. Thank you, Doc.